Hey guys, do you want to hear a story today? I thought you'd say yes. Well, let's dive right into it. I'm going to share with you a brand new story. And this one is called Dougal's Deep Sea Diary. And this was written by Simon Bartram. He was also the illustrator of this book, drew the pictures as well. And you may recognise the art style a little bit because Simon Bartram is also the author and illustrator of a story called Bob, the Man on the Moon, which is one of my favourites. I read that with some of the children in school the other week. I wonder if you've heard that story before. Well, this is another of his books, Dougal's Deep Sea Diary. And let's dive straight into it. Friday, 7.30 a.m. I woke up with excitement. I can't wait till tomorrow. 8.30 Train to work. No one talked to me as usual. I wish tomorrow was here right now. Here's Dougal on the train to work. With all these ordinary looking folk. Nobody talking. Everybody reading. Well, except Dougal. Oh, and look, if you have read Bob Man on the Moon, if you look at the rocket ship on the front of the newspaper, it looks very familiar. Lunch, 12.30 p.m. Too excited to eat. Almost. 3.30, two hours to go. 4.30, one hour to go. Come on, clock. 5.29, almost. 5.30, holiday time. Hooray. 6.30, home on train. No one talked to me as usual. Nine o'clock, I packed my bags and went to bed early. Tomorrow, I, little old Dougal, will become... Dougal the deep sea diver. Wow, look at that double page spread. Beautiful. Oh, look who's down here hiding in the rocks. Saturday, 8 a.m. I set off on the long coach trip to the harbour. On the way, I read about a city under the sea called Atlantis. Wow, imagine that. Full of mermaids and stuff. I wish I could go there. I love deep sea diving, but I don't usually see anything much. Maybe this time. Arrived at the harbour very late. Can't wait for the morning. Sunday, 7.43 a.m. I found my boat for the week. It's very old and rickety. I hope it doesn't sink. 9.32, set sail. 9.33, not sinking yet. 12.01 p.m., mid-Atlantic, in the middle of the ocean. One, two, three, splash! My first dive of the week. It was beautiful. So many fishy friends swam up to see me. Last year, I counted up to 121 different types. I'm sure there are more this year. I swam all day until my skin went wrinkly. Monday, 10 a.m. I was asked to help with the Pacific Dolphin Show. All the dolphins performed well, apart from Herbert, who just couldn't get it right. 6 p.m. I had dinner in the diving capsule. The sharks looked at me hungrily. I think they wanted my salad. <laughs> Not today, boys. Not so sure they're after your salad, Dougal. Oh, look. I spotted another one of these. Is there one of those on every page, I wonder? Mm. 9.14, bedtime. I dreamt of Atlantis, and it seemed so real. Tuesday. Deep sea dive time at 10.43 a.m. I put on a very heavy suit and I went deep, deep, deep down. It was very dark and I kept bumping into things. I didn't see anything interesting. A most uneventful dive. Wow, I think he's passed by the most interesting things. Oh, and over here again, look what I've spotted. 6.30 p.m. I decided to have a quick evening dip, but I couldn't swim for long. The water was very nippy in more ways than one. 9.30, I had a nice crab supper and went straight to bed. Tuesday night, 11.04, I was just about to fall asleep when it began to rain. Pitter patter, pitter patter all night long. Kept me awake for ages. Hmm, is it rain or is it something else? And if you look really closely up here, where my cursor is, you can see the moon and what looks like the trail of a rocket blasting away from it. I wonder who that could be. Wednesday, 6.58 a.m. 
I eventually drifted off. Seven o'clock, that's just two minutes later. Ring! Off went my alarm clock. Oh, I rubbed my eyes and got out of bed. I felt tired and a little glum. Oh dear. Doodle's feeling a bit tired after that lack of sleep. 10.42 a.m. Wow! On my first dive today, I found an ancient treasure chest hidden in an old shipwreck. Inside were mostly coins, too old to use, two crowns, his and hers, and some hand-drawn maps of mysterious underwater worlds. Mm, wouldn't mind a closer peek at them. What a fantastic morning! 12.37pm. Had 40 winks. Oh, I must be very tired. <sighs> After that lack of sleep and then that exciting dive and finding that amazing treasure. Wow, what a start. I'm going to pause the story there, I think, because actually I wanted to talk to you about something. What an amazing find Dougal's already found. He's on Wednesday now, I think, so he's been diving for a few days now. And after a bad night's sleep, it's turned it all around. He's back in the green zone now because he's found some amazing treasure under the ocean. And I'd like us to do a little bit of thinking about that treasure. So I'm going to share something else with you now. Let me share. Come on, Mr. Computer, don't let me down. Here we go. Have a look at this. Yes. What did Dougal find in the treasure chest? Well, we heard some things in the story, but we could use our imagination too, because I'm sure Dougal didn't name everything that was in the treasure chest. I wonder if you can describe what else was inside. Hmm. Let's have a little look and see what else might have been inside. In fact, why don't you tell your grown-up, pause the video for a second and say, what else might have been in Dougal's treasure chest? What things might he have found? And when you've done that, come back to me. Okay, let's see if you thought of some of the same things that I thought of. Coins, jewels, crown, there was a map, maybe there was a tiara, emeralds, rubies. I'm sure you probably thought of many other things as well. So many beautiful things that were inside that treasure chest or could have been inside that treasure chest. OK, here's what we're going to do next. We've got some things here, some nouns that might have been in Google's treasure chest. I wonder now if you can think of some adjectives to describe those nouns. Adjectives are those describing words that we can put with a noun to describe what they look like or what they feel like and so on and so forth. And then we'll be able to make some amazing noun phrases using them. Again, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and maybe spend some time talking with your grown-up. If you've got a whiteboard, you might want to write some of them down on a whiteboard, some of the adjectives you think of, or maybe on a piece of paper, so you've got those to hand for what we're going to use later on. And while you're doing that, I'm going to think of some of my own, and then I'm going to jot them down in a second. So pause the video, have a go at that now. Brilliant. I hope you've got loads and loads of adjectives. I'm just going to write down a couple of the ones that I thought of. I'm going to try and use my best cursive handwriting and spell them out. So those coins look quite golden. So I'm going to have a go at... It's really hard on the computer. Cursive g. Gold is a tricky word to spell, actually. The, it's a, it looks a bit like gold. That g Oh... Oh, sound is a tricky sound in gold, isn't it? Gold, that's not my best. -er. I'm trying my best on the computer. Golden, there's golden. If you haven't got that one, you can magpie it. Maybe you've got it. You might want to correct your spelling if you've got it already. What else could I come up with? Shiny, I think. Shiny. Got to be careful with the I sound in shiny. Oh, that has gone a bit wonky there, hasn't it? Not my best. Never mind. It's really hard writing on the computer. Shiny. We've got the sh sound. That's a tricky I sound. And shiny. Golden. Shiny. What else could we have? We could have 
um, sparkling sp. Need the sp consonant blend at the beginning. Oh, not my best pat either. Sp. There's the R sausage. Spark. Ooh, what's next? Spark. Ah, oh, yes. And what comes on the end? Sparkling. Sp mm, that's the ng mm, sound. Sparkling. Oh, there's a few I've thought of. I'm sure you thought of even more than me. It's very important to practice our cursive as well, though, isn't it? Not just scribbling down. I'm going to go with one more. Mm, oh, I know. That map looks very ancient. That's a good word we could use. I'm going to have a go at that one. Here's my cursive A. Ah. It's a tricky A sound. It's just the A ah on its own. And what's next? Oh, it's a curly cut. Making a tricky sh sound, a curly cut and an i here. And she and if you want to magpie that one, you can. Ancient. Oh, there we go. Ancient. That's a nice word. Oh, it's good for me to practice my cursive as well. If you want to magpie any of the ones that I came up with, then please do, because this is what we're going to do. Now we've got some nouns that might be in the treasure box, and you've got some of your own, and now we've got some adjectives too that we can use to describe. We are going to go have a go at describing exactly what was inside Dougal's treasure box. So I've had a go. Have a look at what I've done first of all. Let's see. I've written... Inside the chest, Dougal found gold coins, red rubies, some emeralds, a shiny crown, and a map. Boom. Done. Easy peasy. Next. I know what you're thinking. No, that's not good enough, Mr. McInnes. Firstly, I've already spotted something. Have you spotted it? Need my purple pen on that one. Mm -mm. I didn't even start with a capital letter. Big mistake. I rushed it. I did end with a full stop, but one sentence to describe all the stuff that was inside? Uh-uh, no way, that's not good enough, Mr McInnes. I have got some noun phrases, that's good. So maybe I might get a little bit of orange because I've managed to do some noun phrases there, gold coins, that's a noun phrase, but that's not enough, is it? One sentence with a couple of noun phrases in it to describe what was inside Dougal's treasure box. No way. Got to give a lot more detail than that, haven't we? I could spend two or three sentences just talking about the gold coins. Their size, their shape, their weight, what they made Dougal feel like when he touched them. I could describe the rubies and how dazzling they were. I reckon I could come up with at least a few sentences for most of the things that were in this box. So after I did that, I realised I'd rushed it a bit. I did have a second go that I haven't finished yet. Would you like to have a look at my second go? Of course you would. Let's have a look at my second go. Oh, much better. I can already see this is going to sound so much better. I'll read it to you. Oh, I just realised. There he is, Twinkle. He's popped in to say hello. I didn't spot him there. He's very quiet, wasn't he? So this is my second one. And it says, inside the chest... Dougal found golden coins of all shapes and sizes. His eyes opened wide with shock as they glinted in the light of his underwater torch. He counted hundreds of the gleaming doubloons, and there were still hundreds more. Doubloons, that's like a, an, a word for old coins. <clears throat> so I, I magpied that, stuck that in there. On top of the coins lay an ancient crown. <coughs> ancient, I remembered that from earlier. So I made sure I popped it in. On top of the coins lay an ancient crown covered in brilliant jewels. Diamonds glistened on its tip and... Oh, I haven't finished. What could I finish that with? Diamonds glistened on its tip and... Maybe you've got some ideas. Let's see if I can listen. Diamonds glistened on its tip and... Oh, I heard a really good one. I'm going to magpie that one. Diamonds glistened on its tip and... Each corner sparkled like, oh no, I thought I was going to write diamonds. I've already got diamonds in that sentence. I might need to think of that again. Each corner sparkled so brightly. 
Oh, made a mistake. Dougal had to cover his eyes. Oh, and I think that needs a she ha at the end, an exclamation point, because that's something quite exciting. That sounds brilliant already. And I've only described the coins and the crown. There's still so many other things that I could describe in that box and what it felt like to Dougal, what it looked like to Dougal, how it made Dougal feel. So that is what I'm going to ask you to have a go at today. So in a minute, once I've explained what I'm looking for, if you want to rewind the video a little bit and magpie any bits from mine that you really enjoyed, you can. Don't forget, if you want to rewind the video and remind yourself of some of the things that were in Dougal's treasure chest, or you might have your own ideas anyway, but you can. You can rewind and have a look back at this screen to help you for your ideas. And you've got lots of adjectives that you wrote down earlier and some of mine here that you can magpie and some of the ideas from there as well. I wouldn't bother copying much from that one because it wasn't that great, was it? So you can magpie some ideas from there if you want. And this is what I'll be looking for. You can start with the sentence or the sentence beginning inside the chest and carry on from there. And I will be looking for, and I know you're going to do these because you're superstar writers. Capital letters to start our sentences and for any names. Dougal is a name, don't forget, so it should begin with a capital D. Punctuation, those full stops, those exclamation marks, those question marks. If there's any questions that you're popping in and if you're making a list of things, you might need a comma. Noun phrases, very, very important. There's no point thinking of adjectives and nouns if you're not going to put them together to make noun phrases. The pencil, which always stands for neat cursive handwriting, carefully working on leading in those letters, joining them up if we've learned the joins, but most importantly, keeping them on the line, keeping them the right sizes, keeping them neat. And then finally, I've put these two and I've highlighted them in orange because these are going what's really going to set your work apart from good to amazing. If you can add detail and you can use conjunctions to add those details. So if you look back at mine, Dougal found golden coins of all shapes and sizes, added a bit more detail in there. His eyes were open wide with shock as they glinted in the light of his underwater torch. He counted hundreds of the gleaming doubloons and, conjunction, there were still hundreds more. So we can use those words like and, or but, or so, or because or even if, or while, or when. Those words we can use to join sentences ideas together to add even more detail, because that's what's really going to set it apart. We could at least think of maybe two sentences to describe one of the things in the box, couldn't we? That would add a lot more detail than just one. So have a go at that challenge today. See how you get on. You can ask your grown-up to give you some help with that one. Don't worry too much about spelling everything perfectly. Just give it a go. But if there's any tricky words that you do need some help with, you can always ask your grown-up. You can listen carefully to the sounds that you can hear before you write them down as well. I love to read your descriptions of what was in Dougal's box. And when you finish that, there is an extension. So when you start that work, you can pause the video and you can rewind and you can look for some of the helpful things that we've done so far today to help you out. And then if you feel like an extra challenge when you've finished your description, you can come back to the video at this point and I'll share that extra challenge. So that's our challenge today. I hope you enjoy that and have fun and come back in a minute. And if you would fancy a go at a challenge, I'll show you what it is. OK, if you really want to challenge with this one, you've described everything that was in Dougal's chest. Here's the challenge. What would you do with all that loot? If you had got all of that treasure, if you were Dougal and you found it all, what would you do with it? Hmm. Have a think. And you can use this sentence starter if you want to. If I found Dougal's treasure, I would. What would you do? Why would you do that? Would you do something helpful with it? Would you use it to make or buy something amazing? I wonder what you would do. 
that's a little extension thing you can have a go at writing and you might need to use the word because to explain your thoughts for that one because that's quite important you can explain why you think something okay i hope you have fun with that and tomorrow we'll hear the rest of the story and then we've got a little bit of something extra for you to do have a great day everyone and see you soon bye bye